Welcome back for more automatic input devices. We're going to continue to roll on. We've talked about limit switches, their application, their function, how they work, the contacts in them, you know, what, what they're supposed to do, um, and all the different types of limit switches. So now we're going to move into pressure switches, okay? Pressure switches are also mechanical input devices, okay? They're still automatic, but they are mechanical, meaning that they make and break a set of contacts just like the limit switch did, okay? Uh, here is our symbol for a pressure switch. Like the limit switch, we also have uh, normally open and normally closed contacts in a pressure switch, and sometimes you'll have uh, both in a, set of, in a switch. I've uh, got one here for you. It's made by Barksdale, pretty common pressure switch. Uh, I've used these a lot in the field. Um, again, <clears throat> uh, you take the cover off of them right here, and we're going to go through the operation, how they work and everything, but uh, inside the, me the um, uh, mechanism inside for me uh, sensing the pressure, uh, and a set of contacts here, there's the conduit um, or seal tight connection on the top there. Uh, but Barksdale is a very popular kind. Uh, again, Allen Bradley Square D, they all have their uh, different uh, types of switches. They all function pretty much the same way, okay? But uh, again, symbols, very important here, okay? All right, so uh, a pressure switch is designed to uh, provide a digital signal, again, on or off signal in our relay logic, whenever a fluid pressure reaches a set point, okay? So going back here, if we look at this uh, diagram here, we see uh, if, if we had a pressure pushing up on this cup here, okay, if a pressure were to rise, we could just, this is kind of a visual image of how this switch works. When the pressure rises, it will close these set of contacts, okay? If we've got a pressure uh, that's already built up, once it drops down, this set of contacts will close. It's probably a little bit hard to see on this, but we're gonna have some bigger images coming up. But anyway, that's how this works. Uh, again, it's like the limit switch. It makes and breaks a set of contacts. Uh, in our uh, relay logic, okay? Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna break it down here a little bit. Um, here's an example. This is a pressure switch. This is the normally open, held closed with pressure, okay? So if we got a run button here, and this is a very simple schematic, okay? We no, no need to get in a great deal of detail just to explain this. But I'm gonna hit my uh, run button. Okay, and right now I apparently don't have adequate pressure. This could be hydraulic pressure. It could be air pressure from a pneumatic system, one or the other, okay. Uh, a lot of these uh, will, will monitor system pressure. If the pressure gets too low, uh, it won't allow to run, uh, the machine to run, okay, particularly with air. See a lot of these with, in, in plastic uh, industry, uh, injection molding systems, um, machines like that. Okay, so anyway, uh, go back to our schematic though, apparently, you know, there's not enough either fluid pressure, uh, you know, uh, hydraulic or pneumatic uh, pressure. So when I hit my run button, nothing's going to happen. Now, if I apply, for, uh, if I get my hydraulic pump running or I connect my, uh, get my air compressor to run and we start to build up pressure, we build up, build up, build up, and it will eventually close these contacts and, and as long as I'm holding my run switch, we're going to turn M1 on to start a motor of some sort. Don't know exactly what kind. That's irrelevant at this point. But again, the, the symbol here is we are looking for pressure to close our switch. Okay. Now, here's kind of the internal workings of the switch. Um, on the bottom here is the port that we will connect our either air or our hydraulic line to measure our pressure. Okay. And there's a piston inside here, and, it, and it's pushing this piston, the, the force of the of the either the fluid of the fluid is pressing uh, up and it's pushing the piston up and it goes up there and it's counteracting a spring pressure but it's trying to push its way up and make contact this stem right here is trying to make contact with a small micro switch like a limit switch and all it's doing is once it goes up there and actuates the switch it closes or opens a set of contacts okay here's our switch right here and here's our common for our hot wire okay Here's our normally open, so if we don't have adequate pressure, okay, the voltage is not going to pass from the common to the normally open, okay, through the normally open, okay? So same, same as right here, okay, we don't have adequate pressure. Uh, if we don't have adequate pressure, the common will allow voltage to pass through the normally closed, okay? Uh, I've got a, the drawing back here I had for the normally, clo normally closed, okay? So, uh, as we apply pressure, again, I talked about the spring. This is adjustable. The pressure is adjustable within a range, okay? Um, and, 
And what this, the way this works is, uh, when we tighten this uh, adjustment down here, what we're doing is we're applying more and more spring pressure. The more spring pressure that we have, the more fluid pressure it's going to take to actuate that piston and get it to make these contacts open or close, okay? So if we, for example, if we have a, we want to set our switch to say 50 PSI, set, let's say it's set to 50 PSI, all right, it takes 50 PSI of pressure, of fluid pressure to offset that spring so that the piston can raise up and the actuator can touch the switch and, and make it change. If we want it to actuate at 75 PSI, what we'll do is we'll dial our knob, we'll take our adjustment knob and run it down and compress that spring. That compressed spring is going to take more pressure uh, from our fluid to offset it and then make the switch uh, contact. So if we wanted to go up to make it uh, monitor and switch states at 75 PSI or 100 PSI, whatever the case may be, we'll just dial that down and make that spring tighter and that requires more pressure. Now once we get the 75 PSI, it's enough to make that piston move because it's overtaking the spring pressure and making it come up there and we're closing the set of contacts or opening which one, whichever one we decide to use. But it's really, really quite simple. There's not a lot you can repair with these things. Um, you pretty much just hook them up, uh, you, you, you pipe your, uh, like I said, your, whatever your fluid power is, it may be uh, hydraulics, it may be pneumatics, but you, you uh, connect it up there and supply the pressure and supply the uh, voltage to it. And the voltage comes in, like I said, in our control circuit, okay? So um, in this case, we'll, we'll look here, this is, this is L1, okay? And we'll make this wire number, let's see, this is one. We'll make this three and this four, okay? So if we were gonna hook this switch up, I would take my number three and hook it to my common because that's what my power is coming in on. This is using a normally open set of contacts, okay? So I'll take my number four wire and hook it to the normally open so that when the pressure is enough to offset the spring pressure, whatever we've dialed it in at right here, and there's a little gauge right here, there's a little scale, you can kind of see what the pressure is that you're um, dialing it into. Okay, you're not just doing it blindly. There, there's a scale for you to look at. And then once we've applied enough pressure to offset that spring, we close and we close that. Boom, our circuit is complete and our output device is, uh, is uh, energized. In this case, our motor's gonna turn on, okay? So uh, that is the way the, uh, again, there's nothing you can really repair. Um, not a lot you can do with it as far as just other than just um, uh, remove and replace, okay? Uh, this is a, this is a little gift right here. This is actually a, this is actually a pressure switch off of a vehicle. When you apply your um, when you apply the uh, pressure, uh, your switch is going to close. This is not really um, this this is not adjustable or anything. But when you press down on the brake pedal, uh, the the diaphragm offsets the spring pressure. Uh, it closes the set of contacts from the battery, and then the battery's. Uh, uh, making connection with our brake light. Just a, just a little gift that I found. I, I thought it might be uh, uh, useful. But that is pressure switches, okay? And again, it can measure either pneumatic or hydraulic pressure. Um, and again, it, a lot of times uh, they'll, they'll be normally closed and if they are too high pressure, if, if it exceeds a certain pressure, they'll open that limit switch and it'll kill our system or, or, or shut the pump down or whatever so, so that you don't start blowing lines so that you don't create excessive pressure in your system. Okay? Uh, again, just a lot of applications uh, for these. Um, but anyway, um, the next automatic input device I want to talk about is the float or level switch. Uh, you can call them either one of them. All right? Um, this one here is, we've got these types of switches on our 1302 process control trainer. Uh, this is an Allen Bradley. Um, again, I like Allen Bradley, but again, uh, they make a ton of different ones. But basically, what it's, it's operating in the same uh, way. Uh, you've got a set of contacts in here, and you've got a set of contacts in here, okay, regardless of the, of the type of switch. And you're doing basically the same thing. This is the float switch symbol, okay? This is normally closed. Okay, and this is normally open here, and I, you can just picture the water or the fluid or, or the whatever it is the, where we are uh, floating the switch in. Okay, you can picture it up here, and as the water rises, it will raise the set of contacts apart. Okay, uh, if the water level is down here, these contacts will be closed, and as my water level rises, okay, this float will ride on top of the water and it will mechanically push that set of contacts uh, open. Okay, again. 
Uh, it's very important that you know your symbols. They operate exactly the way uh, the other two devices, the limit switch and the pressure switch, work. Okay? Some force, some force opens or closes that set of contacts. There's nothing really that different from the other two switches. If you just understand that some uh, mechanical force, in this case uh, a, a liquid force, uh, is actuating a set of contacts to make them open, open or close. Okay, they work the same way, and they're in the same, they're also in the same in as far as the schematic. Okay, in this one we've got our little schematic here. Uh, we hit a start button. We seal in our motor. Okay, this would be if we were trying to, for example, empty a vessel. Okay, so I've got the um, and this has got an automatic mode. Now this is a little bit more complex. Um, uh, control circuits. Not that complex, but it's a little bit more than what you've seen so far. So uh, if, you, if you kind of imagine with me, this is an automatic manual type mode. In automatic, okay, we're going to rely on our float switch to turn our pump motor on or off. In this case, our pump motor will pump out the fluid and empty our vessel, okay? So uh, if we've got, if, we, if we're in automatic here and we don't have, we've got a low water level. Let's say we're pumping out water, okay? Um, we've got a low level of water. Well, we don't want our float switch on and our pump running. As our water rises, okay, the switch will make contact and boom, the pump motor will come on and start evacuating water, start uh, pumping water out, okay? So, that's the way the float switch works when we're trying to empty a vessel. And of course, once the water level recedes, after it's had a chance to pump down enough, the water level will, will lower, and then the float on top of the water will drop, and it will open that set of contacts. Pump will shut off, okay? You don't want the pump run all the time. So that will help. You know, a lot of these are in sumps, okay? Uh, basement sumps and things like that. But in an industrial environment, you have, um, you have uh, chambers where there's a lot of water, uh, or some other type of uh, fluid that's used in the process, and you got to maintain a certain level, okay? So that would be one using emptying, uh, emptying the vessel. And again, the float is, that's, their, that's our schematic, but our float is mechanically connected by an arm, to this arm, by this rod, and it, it's physically going to push this lever up, and that lever's going to break and make a set of contacts, just like the limit switch did and the pressure switch. So it's doing the same thing, same principle, okay? So, the next one, if we are filling a vessel, let's look at it this way, okay? Let's suppose that uh, we are pumping water into a vessel, all right? We've got a float switch. Well, I've got a low level, and our float switch will come down and make contact, okay, and turn our pump on, and we'll start pumping water into our vessel. Once we reach a certain level, okay, it's going to rise, and this little ball is going to ride on the top of the level of the water, uh, whatever fluid we're pumping. Uh, and or it's measuring and it's going to ride and rise and rise until finally it breaks that contact open and we stop pumping water into the vessel. So that's how a float switch works. Uh, again, um, nothing really magic about it. Uh, like it's a set of contacts that are making and breaking just like the other two, uh, the other two uh, input devices. But uh, and again, these are the um, these are the uh, symbols for these. Okay. And again, if you can just picture the liquid level under here and it riding, and if it starts to raise, it's going to raise that bar off the contacts right there. And on this one here, if it raises, it's going to make this uh, bar uh, connect the two contacts so that the voltage will pass through. Again, like the others, passes the digital signal on and off. And com the most common application uh, for the float switches is pump control and also alarms as well. Okay, you can have <coughs> several different ones. Uh, but anyway, I want to talk to you just a little bit about um, some of the troubleshooting um, for, for these devices. We're not, it's, again, it's, it's a little difficult to uh, do troubleshooting lessons uh, with, the, with the video. You have to really get your hands on it. So uh, I just want to talk to you a little bit. Um, I see a lot of you trying to measure voltage across the switch, okay? Technically, yes, you can do that. But what I would like to see you do, particularly until you get a little bit stronger, I want you to get your head around this. Okay, I've talked to several of you in the lab. You've got power coming out of your transformer, and you're, it's always trying to get back home. We stated that in 1401, okay? So we always want to reference to neutral. Don't reference to ground because if this may not be grounded, okay? There are times where, you're, um, where your transformer may not be grounded, so that's uh, an erroneous reference point. So you want to get on that transformer as best you can, or if you have a neutral wire that's landed somewhere that you know is a neutral, you can use that, but what we're trying to do is reference it 
back to our neutral. So hold that on the, your lead on your neutral. And okay, for this in this case, um, we're wanting a solenoid valve to come on. Okay, so what do I have to have to get that solenoid valve to energize? I got to have power. First of all, first thing I want to check: Am I do I have power out of my transformer? Okay, hopefully I do. If I don't, then it's further back up the line. But let's say we've got power. Okay, so we're trying to get it back home. So we're going to start right here. I want that solenoid to come on. So I've got to provide power to it, plain and simple. Keep it very simple, keep it very logical. All right, well, what's, if, if, do I have power? Yes or no, okay? If I don't, then I need to start going backwards. There could be 10 limit switches in this line right here. So what I've got to do is I've got to find out where I'm losing. So start working backwards. I saw a lot of you go in there and you'll immediately want to jump to this or you want to jump all over the place. Be real methodical. Start stepping your way back. It's logical. If I have if I had three or four um, uh, input devices, I would not say, okay, I don't have voltage. I'm going to go here, okay, or I'm going to go right in the middle of the pack. No, be very logical. Just start working your way back until you find where that voltage left you. All right, and then that's when you dial in. Um, when we are looking at these control devices, uh, you know, for example, we want to reference to neutral. When we go up to the actual switch itself. This is going to be our common. This will be our hot wire. So the, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but this is a C for common. So we're going to reference again to neutral. Do I have it going into the switch? Okay. Do I have it going into the switch? All right. Now, <clears throat> if I don't, if this, uh, if it's not coming out of the switch, this is normally open. I will hold my uh, other lead over here. Am I getting it from here to here? Am I getting it from here to here? Same thing. Okay. Normally open switch. Normally open switch. Am I getting it to here? Okay, if you're not, then look and see, all right, I should be getting it if it's actuated. Well, what does it take for it to actuate? Well, we're going to have to have some type of a pressure. Uh, is it going to be hydraulic, pneumatic? I don't know what that would be, but you're going to need some form of pressure to make that contact close, okay? If you don't have that, is your air compressor on? Is your line even hooked up to your pressure switch? Is a valve shut off that goes to this pressure switch? A lot of these things right here are going to get into, that's what we're kind of teaching the whole system here. It's not just electrical, okay? You're going to have to look and say, hey, is, is my hydraulic pump running? If my hydraulic pump's running, then I've got another problem I've got to work, and it's nothing to do with the pressure switch. So my point is, is just be very methodical as you go through this, okay? Try not to jump around too much. And again, when we, I've already explained this part about as far as, you know, contacts closing and that's measuring on the other side, okay? A um, couple other things I want to talk to you about. When you go up to a, uh, a device, visually check it out. There's always a good chance, and I saw this so much in industry. Uh, I saw so many switches and things run over by fork trucks, uh, products drop out of work in the aluminum industry, and heavy billet would fall down and crush things. Well, it doesn't take a meter and a, and a schematic to figure out, there's my problem. It's, got, it's been crushed to death by, by a fork truck or something like that. All right, and the damage just didn't occur for no reason. All right, this is where you want to start looking a little bit deeper, okay? If I look down there and I see a smashed limit switch or a smashed uh, uh, pressure switch or something like that, um, I can change it out, all right? But have I really fixed anything? No, but the problem that needs to be fixed is what smashed it and how did that happen? We got to keep that from happening again, okay? So if you swap something out that's been damaged, now you've really not fixed anything at all, okay? So, uh, and verify that uh, things like uh, your actuator is not loose on your limit switch. Make sure you got pressure going to your uh, pressure switch. Um, and, and just things like that, okay? And also, like I said, verify that you got air and fluid pressure going to the switches. Um, use the digital, uh, the digital multimeter uh, to make sure that your voltage is actually going to the device and see if it's coming through there. All of these things we've talked about in, in troubleshooting. I've worked with many of you out here on the, in the shop and so in the lab. So just, you know, again, I'm reiterating what I've talked to you out there on the lab floor. Um, the, um, and also make sure uh, that you actuate the device. You know, just because you have voltage going to it, it's not passing through it, you may have to actuate it, okay? Uh, Using extreme caution when actuating, especially limit switches. If you jump around limit switches or you actuate them, it could make another uh, system, it could make a system, if, especially if it's still an automatic and there's not quite touching the limit switch and you go over and hit it, some other thing may come down and come at you, uh, you, may, you may be in the way of, of the machine. Um, and I've seen, uh, I actually know two people that were killed 
uh, when they did that one time at, at a plant that I worked at. They, actually, it's the same machine, two different people, two different incidences. So you use extreme caution when you're actuating these devices, okay? And again, after you've checked that there's voltage, isolate the device and use your own meter to uh, check to see and make sure it's all right, okay? Um, one thing I want to tell you too, uh, this, this, will, this will bite you and make you look kind of silly. It's really easy to avoid. When you are replacing a defective component, for example, the limit switch, okay, when you take that uh, defective component out, make yourself a little sketch uh, or take a picture with your phone, uh, depending if your uh, company will allow you to take pictures. A lot of companies are very, very, even though it's not proprietary, a limit switch is not proprietary, they're very funny about it, so don't get yourself in trouble there. Or just draw yourself a sketch and, uh, and, and make a note as to where the wires are terminated, because if you have about five wires and you don't know which one did I pull off of where, okay? Um, you really, you can refer to the drawing, but it's much easier just to make a quick sketch and don't commit anything to memory. And you, when you go to reinstall it, you'll know where the wires go and it'll be a whole lot easier, a whole lot faster, okay? Um, that's what I've got for you as far as automatic input devices, as far as the mechanical ones, okay? The next thing we're gonna talk about is sensors, but for right now, we're gonna shut the video down and go take a rest, take a break, kind of absorb all this. Uh, and we're going to the third part, which is sensors. That'll be the last part we do for automatic input devices. But again, when you come to the lab, you've got questions, you want to talk about things, just let me know and we'll work through them. Okay. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you in just a little bit.